Hi everybody, just a short video today to look at a tool that will assist us in linking some objects within our model to an external database to give us access to some additional information to help us make decisions or build exhibits or just put us in an overall better position of um, understanding of you know what all we're working with, put information at our fingertips that might otherwise not be there. So let me give you an example of, of where I could use this. I've got a, a large project that a number of trees were collected, uh, and then these trees, some determinations would be made whether or not some we would keep or uh, other ones we would remove based on the, the commercial site plan, you know, what was going to be done with that particular piece of property. So an arborist went out and collected some trees, and I've got a, a file here that represents, it's in a database format, but if I open up the table, you'll see that essentially it started from Excel. Uh, I converted it into a Microsoft Access database, and the key, if you will, or the ID for each tree, there is a number, there's a species, diameter at breast height, and condition. So this arborist went out and collected information on, you know, a couple thousand trees, and for each tree they tagged it with a little metal tag or a ribbon to identify a number uh, so that the owner would know, you know, they could refer back to a, a chart or spreadsheet or this information here to uh, be able to quickly identify information about that particular tree. So at the same time, the uh, surveyor went out and collected information. And if I open up this, I've got a file that's point number, northern easting. So they, they located its or they located the position. Uh, elevation I've got as a null elevation, but the descriptions match the tag or the, the ribbon that was placed around each one of these trees. So the surveyors have given me location information with an identifier. The arborist has provided the client or customer, uh, project owner, additional information about each one of those trees. All right, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to be able to bring these together to either perform analysis or, or create an exhibit or just overall use it for being able to do or make better decisions. So let me show you how I would do something like this. Let's go ahead and bring in my points from the survey team. We'll insert points from a file. We'll go ahead and select my uh, file here, being surveyfinal.txt, and then it's going to automatically uh, propose for me different point file formats. This happens to be point, or point number, Northern Easting Elevation Description Space Delimited, so we'll select that. And then I'm going to add these points to a group. Uh, because then what I can do is apply some properties to that group to control how it would look. Typically I'd use description keys, but because the descriptions match tags from uh, what was used in the field to identify the trees, description keys aren't necessarily going to help me. Um, let's go ahead and put this in a, uh, we'll call it collected trees. We'll say OK. We'll click on OK. When those come in, we'll do a quick zoom extents. To see all of the uh, the trees all right by default it's giving me um, you know just the basic uh, X as well as the point number and the description showing let's come over to point groups here this is all points let's update our collected tree properties so we can display them so they look more like trees so I'm gonna right click I apologize it's off the top of the screen but I'm gonna select on properties and then I'm just gonna quickly override these to represent it as a tree and we'll just represent the description only. All right, point number, and that's kind of irrelevant. It's more the identifiers of the trees themselves that will, will help us. All right, 20 scale, let's maybe drop that down to, to 10 right now so I don't have uh, very much in the way of overlap, okay? So I can see the, uh, the trees that were collected. I've got the descriptor identifying that. Now, if you could imagine if my job was to create an exhibit to show maybe trees that were in poor condition, or maybe undesirable trees, or maybe more importantly, uh, trees I would want to make sure that as we laid out our design components, we didn't disturb, you know, the important ones we'd like to keep, maybe a legacy tree or something like that. I'd like to know that. I don't have access to that information based on what I have here, but I do have that access to that information in the database or like Excel spreadsheet that was provided by the arborist. So if our job was to create an exhibit, I'm going to see they're going to be a very manual process of going tree by tree back and forth, or I've got to find a way to use those two together. So fortunately, we can uh, use those together by creating what's called a link template. So let me show you how that would work. First, let's, um, 
identify we've got our database here it's Microsoft Access let me my map tool space is not up yet so let's go ahead and bring that up we're gonna go to the home tab here palettes we'll select on the uh, icon here for the map workspace we'll turn that on I'm gonna go to map Explorer and then we'll uh, hop back to my dialogue here with my database I'm gonna click and hold on that like many things in Civil 3D or the AutoCAD environment in general, we can drag and drop. I'm going to drag that into my uh, map task pane here and let go. It automatically adds that table. So if I double click on tree detail now, let me slide this down. I can see I've got now access to all of those trees. Okay, so I've got access to all of that information now. What I, would, what I need to do from here is I'd like to be able to tie or make this information available when I work with these trees. And I, I wish that I could do that directly from the Civil 3D point object. I currently can't do that. But what we can do is I can put a block on top of these trees and I can link to that information to get me very close to what I would ultimately like to do. So let's go ahead and uh, put a block on top of these. I'm going to select the uh, one of the tree points itself. We'll come up to the Kogo point tools in the contextual ribbon. I'm going to come down to uh, create blocks from Kogo points. And when I select that, we will set my point groups to collected trees. It's the only thing I have in here, but good practice. I probably don't need to do it for everything. Uh, spatial filter, none. I don't need a window, a particular area, anything like that. It's going to automatically make a, a new block for us point. And I'm going to put that uh, on a new layer. I don't have a layer set up already, so let's select this. We'll uh, create a new layer here. We'll create this layer. We'll call this uh, DB DBase database trees. We'll say OK. That's OK. That's the uh, layer that we're going to use. That's fine. And we're going to go ahead and click on OK. And automatically, Civil 3D has created for us a point block on top of each one of the trees and if you're you've been with Civil 3D for a while or you go back to the land desktop days or actually all the way back to soft desk what it's created for us is an old-fashioned soft desk point block so if I double pick on this we see it's a block that's got a location identified right now as just a, uh, a AutoCAD point which is just a dot uh, and three attributes elevation elevation point number and description uh, each one of them being placed on a layer uh, the same name as the attribute tag. So once again, like I said, if you go back to the soft test days, this should look very familiar to you. So I've got that created now. This is now something I can link to. Having said that, I don't need the additional information on the screen because I'm just going to use it for a link. So I'm going to click on the down arrow here. We'll come down to, we'll see the new layers that are created here, uh, points, elevation, and description. Let's go ahead and just drop those out. And then because, because it kind of makes it look like it disappears, we do have the, the point in there. We're going to change the set variable within AutoCAD to display that point differently. So just to do it quickly, I'm going to type it in. I'm going to type in PD mode, and I'm going to set that to 2. That's going to give me a plus. And then I'm going to type in PD size, and I'm going to set that value to point, um, we'll say point 0.05. Let's see what that looks like. Too small. We'll say PD size. Let's make that 0.5. All right, that works a little bit better. So now I, I'll get a consistent point size. These are now the objects that we'll be able to link to. Okay, so uh, I've got now a database that contains IDs or tree tags, if you will, or the key within my database that matches the descriptions that were used for my civil points, which I've now added to these point blocks. If I can tie those two things together, I can give myself access to the information within the database at the same time I work with my trees. All right, so to do that, we're going to create what's called a link template. So I'm going to come over here in my map task pane to link template. We're going to say define link template. And I'm going to come down and we'll give it a new name. We'll call this uh, tree links. And I'm going to tell it which, which uh, value within my database identifies the key. The unique value within the database I'd like to you know connect to my, my model we'll click on key for the uh, the ID I'll say okay I now have a, a hook if you will into the database I now need to create a subsequent hook to tie that to the objects we created here 
So with the link template built, we'll expand that by clicking on the plus, coming down to tree links, and then I'm going to right click on that and we'll say generate links. From there, our linkage type, we're going to connect to blocks because that's what we've built. We're going to, from a data link perspective, we're going to create database links. And then I'm going to come down, the only block that I have is point, otherwise I would grab that from the drop-down list. And what value matches up with the ID in my database, that would match up with the description. And then validation, I'm not going to worry about validating it, saying the link must exist or create new entries if new, we won't worry about that. We'll go ahead and click on that and we'll say OK. Um, block objects to generate links from, we'll say, uh, I'll click on all. Grabs everything and it, and it generated for us 158 links. Okay, if we double click on the database here, let's take a look at that. We're going to go to highlight and I'm going to check these top three boxes here so that I can get some interaction going back and forth between the database now and my model. We'll say auto highlight, we'll say auto zoom, and we'll say auto select. From there, uh, this database contains 2,000 trees, which my, my model only has about, you know, 150 plus of those. We're going to highlight some objects within my model so that I can see which objects correspond with those in the database. We'll back up and we'll take and uh, window these objects here to select these guys. And when I right click, I see those objects are now highlighted in yellow. So as I scroll down, it shows me those. And at the same time, I've immediately got some QA, QC. So in the event the arborist has provided me data for these particular trees, uh, these are what I was able to match to the points that were collected in the field. So then I, I have to look to see I, I don't have a link to the ones that are listed in white. So did the survey crew not pick those up? Did they not find those? All right, I now have some immediate QA, QC to see if I have issues in the field between what was collected by the arborist and you know what I have um, from the survey team. All right, so there's some other trees that are hanging out there that uh, currently aren't identified in my model. All right, now I may want to do more with this. Maybe I want to start creating some exhibits to show me uh, trees that uh, require removal or, you know, trees that are dead or trees I want to make sure that I stay away from. So let's let's do this. We'll, uh, we'll go to highlight and I'll say, uh, you know what, just show the highlighted records only so that we're only looking at uh, the ones that exist within our model. And let's go ahead and put a filter on those, an SQL filter. And let's see, the, uh, the condition, let's say we want to find anybody whose condition is equal to, I'll click on the ellipsis here and we'll say poor. Well, we've also got one for dead as well. So let's say uh, we'll add that to the list and then we'll say or condition equals dead. We'll add that to the list and then we'll say or uh, maybe species equals not a big fan of uh, box elder trees. Those aren't typically trees that we would want to keep around anyway. So we'll add that to the list. So anything that satisfies that criteria We'll go ahead and click OK. It updates our list so that we can see those. At the same time, I can select the first object in the list here. We see it identified in the model. I'll select the uh, top one here, and we can immediately see all of those trees that, re that are, represent those things that are poor, uh, dead, or uh, a box elder type or a less than desirable tree. Okay, now as we look at that, it's like it's, it's not actually grabbing the civil 3D point objects. Remember, it's grabbing the blocks we put on top of it. What if I'd like to maybe take some of this information now and extend it back to the points themselves? Well, I can, I can actually do that through a little bit of Excel to work my way back to the points themselves through the ID, because remember, the ID matches the descriptor. All right, let's do this. I've uh, highlighted all of these. I'm going to copy those to my clipboard. All right. Let's do this. I'm going to fire up Excel. We'll create a new workbook. Select the first cell here, and we'll go ahead and paste those. So from here, I could immediately, just from that data, uh, create a, you know, I've got the basis of information to generate a report. I could start adding up all the caliper inches of all maybe the trees that need to be removed so that I could uh, create a report to show maybe uh, some costing or uh, summary of quantities to show tree removal, things like that. But uh, if I'd actually like to create the exhibit from that, I really only need the descriptors. So what I'm going to do is we'll highlight the uh, columns here. Let's we do two at once. We'll highlight those and delete them. So I've only got the column left now that shows the descriptions. So what I'm going to do is this. 
um, I'm going to put those values into a point group. So I need a point list to put into that point group. So there are probably a lot of different ways to do this. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to build my point list by selecting my values, right-clicking, copying that to the clipboard. Once it's copied, I'm going to click in a new cell here, and when I paste, there's a special paste that says Transpose. Uh, it's going to take it from a column and convert it to a row. So then we'll go ahead and delete this column here. All right, with this information now in a row, we'll say that I'd like to uh, save that. We'll save it out to my folder here um, as a text file. So we've got text. We'll call it uh, book1.txt is the default. We'll go ahead and use that for right now. Yep, we'll go ahead and keep using that format. That's fine. We've got that file. Let's go ahead and uh, open that up. So we'll come out to uh, this file here, book1. This is what was produced. What I want to do is create a comma delimited list of these values. So what I can do is a quick find and replace. So let's uh, highlight this area here. I'm going to copy that. We'll say I'd like to edit and we'll replace and paste that here. Whether it be a tab or five spaces, doesn't matter. That's why I do a, a select like copy. Replace that with a comma. We'll say replace all. All right. I've now got a list that represents all those descriptors or IDs. I'm now going to highlight that and copy it to my clipboard. Let's minimize this. And when we come back to Civil 3D, let's um, come into here so we can uh, deselect these guys. I'm going to go to Point Groups, and I'm going to create a new group. And that group is going to be Tree Removal. All right, and Point Style, let's just use something. I'll say Benchmark. We'll use something different. Um, descriptor, uh, I'll do northern easting maybe just so we can see uh, something different than what we had. I'd probably create a, a custom style for this in my exhibit, but we'll just use the defaults here for right now. What would I like to include in that tree removal? We'll say include with raw descriptions matching, and then I'm going to paste the points that we just pulled from our, our uh, query. Let's go ahead and say OK. It's automatically done that, and now I've got my Civil 3D points uh, locations listed for each one of those trees that are going to be removed. All right. At the same time, I could even come back with point groups. We'll go and right click on properties, and I can start to adjust the display on this. I can maybe say all points, float that to the top. So we'll click on all the points look the same, or whatever style's been associated with that. We'll go to properties, maybe float uh, collected trees up to the top. Now everybody looks like a tree, as if it was originally collected. And now if I was going to do an exhibit, we'll go to Properties, and we'll say uh, Tree Removal. I'll float that guy up to the top, and uh, maybe even take all points and move that up one, so that it either looks like uh, it's got a northern and an easting, or, uh, or just a, a little X. So we'll say OK, and um, we're good to go. Oh, my Tree Removal might still have been in there. So we can reorder those, uh, those groups so we can control the display from that point forward. All right, so um, hope this has been helpful. What we've done is walk through a process where we were able to use a link template. And using that link template, we were able to link information in the database back into our model onto uh, some blocks to help us uh, gather information or get access to more information, make better decisions, make exhibits. And then um, from there, we were able to uh, start to produce, maybe through Excel or whatever, some uh, point groups in that to help uh, tie that information back to a civil 3D object. So hope this has been helpful and uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. See ya.